Hello everybody and welcome to our episode on painting bad rook in oils. This is going to be part one. It's going to be broken into three parts, beginning, middle, end. And the beginning, almost always, in fact it always does, start with our initial glazes, shaded base coat. Now those work a little bit differently with the oils than they do with the acrylics. Still pretty similar, but we'll get to some of those important differences as we get into it. Now we're going to keep this palette rev relatively simple here. And these are oil paints that they're just regular, what would you say, over-the-counter oil paints that I have mixed with some thinner myself, some high-quality thinner. We'll go over something like that. So in the U.S., you can find this at Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Even, I get it on Amazon. Now, in, say if you're in Europe or whatever, sometimes your option is going to be something like this. And this is the first stuff that I tried. So MIG Ammo odorless thinner they're very much the same thing and you're going to want to for several reasons want that high quality thinner you don't really need very much of it in fact i just this is really just a little cap right here that's all i'm going to be using as we film here these again are things i mixed myself i have plenty of videos actually on the patreon page that cover that it is important to have an agitator inside so each one of these is just a piece of metal sprue we'll go over some of the colors here We've got titanium white, our off-white yellow, that's your permanent yellow, bright, and then we've got our cadmium yellow medium, terra rosa, one of real important color there, a fanchion red, but there's, I think, naphthol red. There's a, several of that same type. This is actually Egyptian violet, also diazony purple. You have a thalo blue here. You got an ivory black here, indigo blue here, Van Dyke brown here. That's we're just gonna stick with that. We're actually gonna make the green flesh tone just by mixing colors. That's what the oils do really well. So we're gonna do some mixing with our oils here. Not quite sure just how close we'll be able to get to our bad ruck there because we don't have a whole lot of time here. This is kind of a truncated version of that. We'll try and do it as many things as we can, or especially on the, the back banner. Now you're also going to want to have some of these. These are just really basic, cheap makeup sponges. And we're going to cut these into some smaller pieces here. And you're going to see these again in just a bit when we get into our initial glazing phase. Now brush-wise, these are the usual number eight round craft brushes. Again, these are from Hobby Lobby. But we have also found some other interesting oh, cousin slash substitute. So these from Hobby Lobby here, these Royal Langnickels. These actually were, these were gotten from Dick Blick and they are pretty much the same thing. Now you can see what happens when these brushes have been beat up for a bit. Actually, in some ways it becomes a, a filbert brush, which is nice. So we've got our sponges right here. Key thing as always with the oils is just less paint way less than you would use with acrylics it just it's the nature of the beast and you also want to think about thicker oils thinner oils that's going to be more important than with acrylics as well acrylics just dry so that's not something that's really you have to think about also with the oils if you're going to work in one session like we are here everything's going to be wet and wet now i have done plenty of things where the colors actually do just dry in between and Actually, that's uh, that works really well for the oil still also. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into our initial glaze here. And that's not going to just be a matter of dumping brown all over this thing. We are actually going to try and be a little bit targeted, put some blues in some areas and other, because that the initial glaze that we do, we're going to be really using that, especially in our shaded base coat phase. And we're going to get to that next. Let's dive in here with that pre-glaze that we talk about all the time. And that's going to just center on a few of these colors here, mostly these darker ones. Now, some darker colors are more, we just call them staining rather than other ones. Egyptian violet, indigo blue, what that means is that even when we wipe those away, there's going to be a little bit of that left behind. And we'll, we'll do this here. Now, the indigo here, we've thinned a little bit additionally with some of that high quality thinner not not a lot 
We're also going to, we're now going to bring in a little bit of that ivory black. We're just trying to get a few different colors in here because when we wipe this away, you'll be able to see a little bit of a difference. But when you start painting over the top of it with lighter colors, then you really see that. So we're just, we're, it's like a game of chess. We're trying to play one or two moves ahead here. We do it with the acrylics, but with the oils, that's even more important. And as I said, we're just going to go back and forth here. So I've grabbed a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown in some areas here. We're back towards more of the indigo. This initial glaze used to be much more liquid. We used to put way more thinner in this. And just over time, less and less. Uh, that same process kind of happened with the acrylics too. I just found myself using less and less of that acrylic or, or of the water when I would do my uh, pre-glazes. So this is a little bit more of that Van Dyke brown here. Now I also, I think if I can, I'm going to see if I can find some burnt umber. That's another thing that's we're going to want here probably more at the later stages or mid to late stage maybe than this early but i'm going to get it out here now because i think that's a kind of important thing to have like i said with the greens we'll we'll just mix something for the green skin tone I, green is certainly easy enough to deal with so we can we can do that now you can, I think you can also tell that maybe in areas where we're thinking about doing something that's metal, well, we give it more of a, say, an indigo blue color and places like here where maybe it's going to be something leather, something along the lines of brown. I'm not really sure what I want to do with that jacket, but what I'm going to do is just take some of that Egyptian violet, a little bit of that indigo blue. That might be a little bit too straight up as, as far as paint goes. We'll just hit this jacket here. We don't want it to end up being too purple. We do want some different colors along the way. And yet when this gets wiped away, well, and it's not entirely wiped away, it's we'll wipe away portions of it. Some are less than others. The primer, which I'll, I'll show you after we kind of position these colors here, that is just your typical Badger Steiner Res. There was no Zenithal. In fact, it was a flat primer color. I think it was the light flesh, and it was just brushed on. It wasn't airbrushed or sprayed or anything like that. I just pretty much took a brush just like this number eight round and just brushed it on there, and that was it. That's all I did. Now, if I'm doing a whole bunch of figures, I'll, I'll break out the airbrush and I'll just shoot the primer that way. But when it's just one figure like this, I also just wanted to show how the oils, you can use those to essentially create your own zenithal. Is it, is it priming? Well, not really, but you're sort of prepping the surface. You're... You're getting some advanced colors out there that you can work with. Now, it's not always, say, you want to have a red cloak. And you say, well, that pre-glaze should be red. Well, not necessarily if it is something in the range of dark browns or maybe even as crazy as something that is dark green. Well, you're going to end up with some more interesting shadows that way. So you can always, like here, there's actually brown there. If that hat's going to be more of a bluish color, or I mean, I guess if it's black, you know, the, the feather there, since a lot of that is going to be wiped away with the sponges, I can, I'll be able to go over that and maybe get some interesting, well, brownish tones in the shadows there. Because, yeah, you can always just shade things darker. Those, those shadows just end up looking a little bit boring. This is one way to maybe make your shadows a little more interesting. Maybe a way to get your shadows established a little more quickly, too. 
in some ways also too with the oils and this is some something i remind uh, the folks that watch my videos all the time on the twitch channel and on the patreon page these most oil paints are going to be transparent in fact there's very few that aren't transparent the vast majority of them are that's just the nature of oil paints it, it's something that you really kind of not just learn to adapt to but sometimes just use to your advantage i know umber is one that i recently kind of said okay yeah it's it's transparent but it makes a fantastic sort of glazing color not just at the start because that's pretty much the only time i used it I say at the start of a miniature and then i realized oh this can actually do some really nice things part way through the you know maybe i'm two-thirds through or even towards the end it can do some interesting things in terms of glazing and tinting but it's a transparent color i also have a whole bunch of color swatch basically color theory exercises where i just i take some oil paints and i'll just take some sheets of illustration board whatever and i'll just mix all those co uh, colors together say I'll, I'll mix white into burnt umber and then white into another color that's maybe like van dyke brown so take somewhat similar colors colors in the same range and then just mix them all and then see what i get it's a nice library to have that's for sure now we're almost good i just want to get the entire surface covered here so here's a little bit of that indigo we're talking about getting some something bluish where there is going to be maybe something that's metal i think just about everything is covered here now it just looks like a mass of dark i realize that right now it looks like a mass of dark when we start to take some of this away that's going to reveal some of those colors underneath then We'll start down here on the base. And that already, you can see it has that bluish tinge to it, even here on his sword. There you can see it's a bit more of a brown. One of the reasons I cut the sponges, it makes it easier to get him into these places. You also end up using fewer sponges, which is not a bad thing. So you can see the coat has a little hint of purple to it. We'll be going over the top of that with some darker colors. But see how this, in some ways, is it's, it's like a zenithal priming. But to me, it's just got more to it than a typical... It usually looks like a black and white grayscale thing, right? That's what you usually get out of some kind of a zenithal priming. And I have done zenith oil priming with the oils. It's, it's not like something you don't do. In fact, it, this is only kind of a very recent development comparatively. Or I really don't do much in the way with the primer. Part of it has to do with just running out of a lot of primer colors. And I just, I have a lot of, say, medium tone to lighter tones left. If you just want to use, take white and gray and, and make it, a somewhat light gray that should be fine as well so we've got pretty much most of what we needed to remove taken away and just to point this out again it is badger steiner res primer that i just brushed on and yes it is the light flesh that's all it is just one color Now the, the miniature here is, is made out of fine cast, so I tried to get rid of whatever weird things I could. As far as the casting side of things go. So alright. There is your quick initial glaze. Now we are just gonna take a, a larger brush, it could be a filbert brush like this. It could be that same number eight round. But we'll just take some of our lighter colors here and let's start to work some of that in. 
Now I can also turn up my brightness here now that we've taken away that darker primer. And this is what we mean by painting very dry. So this is virtually like a dry brush here but I think you can see how that is mixing. Mixing there with the existing oil. Why? Because you can see it on the brush. That's how you know we're getting some of that other color mixing with us. I'm going to take a little bit of that yellow here. A little bit of that yellow and we'll... You can see as we start to hit some of this some of these metal surfaces well they they don't look brown anymore again not a dry brush but it doesn't look like a dry brush because you're mixing all of this with the wet paint that is underneath there that's why the that pre-glaze as we call it is really important because you're this is you're, you're taking advantage of it here we're just trying to set up all the stuff that is yet to come. You notice we're kind of taking the, the some brush strokes here at a favorable angle to take advantage of whatever texture is there. But every so often, look how dark that is. I have to go back here. I have to get fresh paint, but you can hear the sound of that being scrubbed away. And we'll just get some of these Again, going after things like the metal surfaces here. Uh, we can glaze over the top of these. We can do all kinds of rust and everything else. But all of this is just so uh, it's we're just trying to take advantage of what we did before. You can see it's starting to get some lights into it here. All right, let's do some on whatever that is right there. Some little engine on his back. And the palette itself, you can see there's not much mixing of colors that happens on the palette. The, the miniature, for all intents and purposes, this is your palette now. The miniature is your palette. But again, all of this sets up everything that is yet to come. Now, all of the, the interesting colors on his face and, and the metals and everything else, we'll, we'll worry about that later. We just want to work in as much of our colors as we can here to, on the metals. You can see, look at how dark that brush is. Uh, I'm not, I also see that I'm not dipping it in any kind of liquid to clean it out. I'm just taking a paper towel here, and that is it. Because, well, if we are dipping it in some kind of liquid or the thinner every couple of seconds, we're not going to get that much of a dry brush out of it, are we? So something important to keep in mind. Now here, there's going to be a lot of rust on this, so I'm not going to really spend a whole lot of time on the base here and again we we have a little bit more limited time frame than i normally have for the videos here so i don't want to say this is a, a cliff notes version but definitely not as much as my typical video is two to two and a half hours long Now, this we might do some kind of, probably just to make it red, green, whatever, some kind of lighter color tubing in there. And I don't want to do too much with the lights here either. We can go too far with that here. We'll just hit that. Some on his teeth here. And now let's start to maybe think about some areas of colors. I'm just going to again take the paper towel here, wipe off that brush. We've got a little bit of our red here. And I'm looking at his fist over here. And I'll use that same 
see a very light brush to, and look at I'm actually kind of stippling that on there what that means now is that 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 darker color underneath that gets to show through it creates some create some shadows for us there and some of that other color it's it's mixing right there on the brush that's why if I want that to be a brighter red I have to go back I have to get more red paint freshen up that brush and then go back at it again and we'll just we'll leave that and let's let's move on here to our oh I just keep thinking of a bad moon symbol there very light brush stroke here oh, okay that's supposed to be oh, I'm, I'm not going to necessarily replicate what we see here but just trying to use that as a guide but look at this see how that mixed with the darker colors there I don't have to go in there and glaze that or whatever it's really important when you work with oils not to think layers and layers of paint I know we, we mentioned that sort of at the top but this is the this is the putting that into practice I guess now these colors across the the top here that you see these are about the only opaque colors right here these four the terra rosa and that's the other thing you have to sort of account for with the oils is that your most opaque colors are your lightest ones the darkest colors typically those are going to be your most transparent it's just again the nature of oils and how they work now I'm just going to take this here and, and a little bit of my lighter colors here, but I'm using this even like a filbert brush. Even now, using this like a filbert brush. Uh, is that all? Okay, so this right here is a different thing. We'll just get that that skull up there, and we'll hit that with some of our white, and we'll throw some rust color over that now. I'm just going to get some color here real quick on that Space Marine helmet. We got some of that Thalo blue over here. Same thing, very light brush stroke. Okay, you notice there's not the hand with the death grip on the ferrule. Not doing that. Also trying to let that just mix with what's already there. I mean, there's a big old pole sticking through the helmet here okay we can lighten that a uh, smidge and again we're not really mixing colors on the palette here this is we kind of skip layers with the oil so you can see this is much lighter than what was there we don't need a whole lot of paint on that brush as always but now we'll get some some mixing happening here so we could just let the paint mix on the figure itself very important now we'll just let that sit there as well what's going to happen elsewhere here let's do some darker things on the coat here let's take some of that indigo blue we're taking some of the black and throw that under here now the that little checker pattern we'll see if we can put that on there too but here let's just get some darker colors on here light brush stroke as always these these brushes right here they run about the same kind of price range as what i showed you earlier with the those uh craft brushes from from Hobby Lobby those things are about I don't know 20 cents a piece or where I'm like 25 cents a piece these are more like 50 or 60 cents a piece probably depending on I guess sales tax in your area now I'm gonna take some Van Dyke Brown here we'll hit this strap we'll do this not quite sure what I want to do with this collar. So typically, I don't know, I, I like to make those 
either red or gold, some kind of a color. I think we'll just maybe do this right here. Okay. That that's going to be sufficient for this part right here. Now I also use these smaller brushes here. These are not expensive either. They're sort of a faux sable. They're they're <laughs> they're kind of a fake sable. So nice and inexpensive. Now this is a little bit thinner right here, and it's almost. I don't know if you've ever seen people doing the oil washes say for weathering this is a little bit more like that it has some capillary action but see now the your hat starts to go back we're going to throw a little bit of color onto his feather as well and we're just going to maybe try and get some yellow into that And we'll just throw some color on that real quick here. Again, we'll let our pre-glaze color sort of mix with that. Now let's make ourselves some kind of a green. We have yellow. We already have blue. We can make ourselves a green out of that. Now if I use the indigo blue, that green is going to be a little bit a little bit on the deeper side, a little less bright. And you can see that's that's also mixing in with those darker colors that are already there. So quickly on the hands here. Okay. And we just we're gonna do this all across the figure we find an area of, you know okay are these supposed to be red here probably not i think i'm just going to do that more in a rusted type of a, a thing and i think that's what we'll maybe do very quickly in our next little segment is just we're going to pop in some of that rust and well some initial rust and weathering usually that happens a little bit later on things like this but it, it's an orc so weathering is probably going to take a little bit more of a priority here let's just throw a little bit of while i'm thinking about it here just throw a little bit of gold there what what is this patch okay that's just dark we'll just chuck in a little bit of gold here hit those teeth some more here and then we'll just uh i've got some blue right here i'm just going to indicate a few things here on his apparently his metals so something there And I'm just going to take some lighter colors here. And we'll just hit the face real quick here, his hand. Again, all we're trying to do is set up all of our future, everything we want to do next. This, not quite sure what we want to do with that. If we want that to be some kind of a greenish brown or whatever, almost like some kind of ammo that we'll, can't really tell if that's ammo there or not. Really can't tell. Last but not least here, I'm just going to take a little bit of paint away there. So in the, the last little segment here for this video, just be a quick one. We are going to throw some darker glazes, some rust, and that sort of thing. We'll throw it over the top of this, and we'll do that next. Let's get into some rust here, and it's pretty simple. Now, there is one little caveat here with 
with the oils, if you're going to do a glaze like this or a, a pin line wash, sometimes that's referred to with, with vehicle painting. Well, you've got to keep that paint not only just super, super thin, but you can't use the typical brush stroke that you're used to. You basically have to touch the brush to the surface. Now, let's see. We took a little bit of umber in our terra rosa, and this is the as good a place as any to see that. See what happens where we just touch the brush to this and see how the capillary action of the oils does the rest. And we'll, but now we have to go back here. We have to get some more of our paint. But it is very, very liquid. It's probably 97% thinner. And we'll just, we won't be able to hit everything here because, again, we don't want the video to be too long. But you can, you can get a sense of where, where this is headed now. But again, all we do is just touch the brush there and let it move, let it do its own thing. So you, I think you'll really see it back here as well. See how that paint is just moving on its own? Look at this. You can also overdo it with the rest. It's like with anything, too much of something, not necessarily a good thing. If everything is hyper rusted, now we will be doing some additional rust over this, some lighter rust. We're just going to start out with this darker rust. And what's, what's interesting is if you let this sit for 15, 20 minutes, sort of depending on the paint too, it'll almost look like it's dry. It won't be dry, not by any stretch of the imagination, but that... That means the paint is set a little bit, and then you can go back in there again with some subsequent. Look at that. See what that's doing, and it's nice and easy. Nice and easy. So one of the first things that we'll tackle in our next episode is we'll maybe do some lighter rust in some places. We're going to get some darks in other places. Going to reinforce some darks. We'll work on the, the skin tone. I think if we are going to do that checkerboard pattern back here, that'll be one of the last things that we do. I'm pretty sure we'll save that for our final episodes. Again, doing some, some rust over there. I'm going to maybe do a little bit less on the actual weapon itself, maybe. This, is, again, is a combination of that umber and terra rosa. Terra rosa is a probably one of the most opaque colors you're going to find in oils that doesn't say cadmium on it so also for folks that aren't familiar you don't necessarily have to get cadmium yellow cadmium red first of all just they're going to be expensive really expensive when you get things like a starter set and i think we'll maybe talk about that maybe at the start of the second episode, since we've kind of covered just the little introduction to the oils. And I, I know for some of you, oils is not something you've ever thought about doing before. I love the oils for a whole bunch of reasons. They're super forgiving. I don't like any of this stuff. I take one of these sponges, I can just wipe the whole thing right off of there. And there's been times where I've done freehand or whatever, said, ah, don't like that and then just wiped it away and it was just fine and went right back over it again some of the free blending that you get is also really nice and we're getting a lot of that here as some of our rust just kind of mixed now here not going to use that terrorosa so much where the red is because well that's going to kind of disappear We'll get some more of our rust in here. So we will, like I said, we're going to go in. Maybe not the first thing, do any lighter rust, but we'll definitely, I think we'll hit some of the things on, on his face maybe, do some uh, 
some other glazing in areas like on his on his metals and do that again not going to do too much of that weathering on his sword well it, it might uh, or his weapon whatever that is that might change uh, just might change but for now i think uh, we'll yeah we'll get into some of our the greens on his skin to get a bit more of our rust here on this it's also going to separate that from from his coat slash cloak whatever here Uh, that I, I don't think I'll get that. I'll just save that. Now let's do some much darker right in here. I don't know if you can see that too much, but again, it's all we can do is touch the brush. There, we're not doing this kind of a brush stroke. We're just literally just tapping the brush against this here. So just touch that, and it flows. And because of that capillary action. It's really going to get down into those crevices. Rain like crocheting, that kind of control can be a little scary at first. Not quite used to doing that, but ultimately it does the job really well. And I can't wait to get some of the lighter rust in there. We're also going to go back in with some other metal colors. Something that's maybe a little bit more bluish, grayish. And I guess that's the other thing, too, is not to think about some uh, metals as just various forms of bluish gray. We're going to get some greens in there. We'll get other colors into those metals as well. Okay. So, again, we don't want to take too long here. So next episode, we're going to go into things like the face. Just get some some lights in here, some darks. And then kind of one of the last things we, we might do is actually is add our lightest rust colors in there as well. So thanks, everybody, for watching this video for part one. I'll catch you again on part two of painting Badrook in oils. So let's do some stuff with his face right here. We have that Egyptian violet out here. Just like we did that sort of a pin line wash there on the for the rust, we can do something like that on his lips. I'm also going to take some of my fanchion red here and we'll mix it with that really dark. Here's some of our dark brown. And we'll get his gums up here, get down in between some of his teeth. Remember, we're talking about making some things darker. And that's what we're going to do here, too. Always working on the entire surface of the miniature, not just the face and nothing else. I don't do that with acrylics. I certainly am not going to do that with oils. It, it would kind of counteract the whole purpose of using oils anyway so here's another kind of a little bit of a glaze here again on these metals more dark over here on the wrappings on that handle now let's see what we can do here skin tone wise now here's that skin tone that we mixed Look at all the different greens we've got. Greens that are more blue. Greens that have a little more yellow in them. And as you can see, we've gone a little bit lighter here. We're not doing this with acrylics. You, you layer sort of gradually, right? You go slightly lighter, slightly lighter, slightly lighter. With the oils, why do that when you can wet blend? Just really do a lighter color and then just blend it all together. You would be 
amazed at how much time that will save you. It saves me hours and hours of time. And yes, this is what I do for a living. And I paint between 10 and 18 hours a day, every single day. You don't have as much time as I do. You have way less time. So you need to be able to do things quickly as well. Now, to, to some folks, they see this and they go, yeah, you know, I'd, if I just needed this for a game, yeah, half an hour, 40 minutes of painting, or some people would just be happy with this, period, as is. But obviously, we can take it further here. You can see we're starting to add in some more lights here. Let's think about getting that eye back there. And here, look at this is another case where so I'm just going to let the paint mix on there. It's slightly lighter. That sort of mixing, I, I'd say it comes to folks that maybe are a little bit more experienced with the oils. Also, let's say, you're, you're, okay, what's the ideal thing to start with with oils? Something that has really large open surfaces, cloaks. Heck, maybe even Space Marines. But just things that are a little more simple. This right here maybe is not your best choice for a first miniature. Now, see how we're, we're just kind of throwing in some lighter colors like this. And we're going to grab just any old sec another brush here. And we're going to blend this. And it's, you're going to notice sort of a circular sort of a brush stroke right here. See how that, those hard edges just go away. They're gone down here. You see how those just, again, they just went away. Don't have to worry about the hard edges anymore. That, that sort of a brush stroke, it, it might take a little bit of getting used to learning how that works. Always, always be patient with yourself. I suppose that is, that's something I try to recommend to folks all the time. See what happens here now when we start to get some lighter glints on those, on the metal over there. Now we'll hit this hands again, and we're going to get a little bit lighter here. But you notice I'm not, there's no gradual layering there. We just, we put a lighter color on there. I'm going to blend it with the color that's there. That's that's the whole point to using the oils. I know some folks, they say, well, yeah, oil is wet blending, and that just means you're wet blending those gradual layers together. But And that's kind of how I thought of it, too. I, I didn't really, didn't actually really know any better, but eventually I realized, I said, wow, why am I doing all this? Why am I taking so much time when the oils excel at just, Okay, see that lighter color that I just put in there? Now, this brush has to, can't have too much paint on it. Well, any paint on it, actually. So I just blend that right there. This is the kind of, I guess, oil paint specific benefits that I talk about all the time here. Well, let's look at this a little bit lighter here now. Now we talked about other colors in the middle. Here, this is actually a bit of green right here. Now I'm going to take this. So this is again that Royal Lang Nickel and just plop that color on there. And now all of a sudden, these colors, uh, look at how nice and smooth that is. It starts out so rough, and then eventually you start to see you get there's a we call it the Book of Wapple, and one of the newest chapters in the Book of Wapple was sometimes or most of the times it has to be messy before it can be neat. And I think to most of you, it was horrifyingly messy at the start probably shockingly messy at the start. But I was hoping that you would kind of stick through and watch these 
last two episodes as all of a sudden things start to develop and well they're not they're more like shockingly blended and shockingly neat and all kinds of fun color blends lots of depth of shading things that are just easier done with the oils now remember we're talking about the here let's get a little touch of that red into this and this is where we're gonna take advantage of that purple that's already there so i'm essentially going to blend that new color with that purple that's already there so boom he's got his purple lips you can even go to that quadruple zero and we'll give him a little bit more of a gum line here yeah see that now let's see what we can do with his hat here we don't want it to end up looking pink so i will get some yellow into that and now his little feather looks a little lighter he's starting to pull out some of the individual little bits of that feather here we can re go back in with some darks too if we feel like it oils are super flexible like that very very flexible now here's some of those darks we were talking about and do some of these metals here because we could only do so much around that that pre-glaze right sometimes you just you end up hitting some things we'll make this maybe a touch darker there also going to put some look at that it's a little lines that i just painted in there and what's fun is that they actually did blend a little bit with the color that's already in there we'll do some go the other way now again let's start to think about some cylinder shapes here so that means maybe a little reflected light under here now the other thing too with the oils remember we mentioned thin over thick and vice versa right now this is thinner paint over thicker paint that's why that's sticking there is no 100 percent well if you follow this it's a you just have to kind of feel it you have to say oh well paint's not sticking i'm pretty sure i need to go a little bit thinner and it doesn't necessarily have to mean you add more liquid to it it could just mean you just have less paint in the brush too that is something i kind of realized myself that whole notion about the thinner paint does it necessarily mean more liquid we'll get these i'm just going to assume these are also some teeths here we'll get these a little lighter just a little lighter You also have to determine okay all this this little stuff here and and kind of the background here how how much do you want that to show up there's all these little metal plates attached to them and stuff do we really want those to be that much lighter or would we rather just have some of the rust maybe show those are there now i'm going to get in here with some of our bluish green right in here so what what's with the green well it's something that that separates the metal maybe from his coat there also it's going to be a nice little contrast to the rust colors rust colors are red what's complement to red that would be green so it, it kind of makes your rust color that much more prominent and we'll 
you can do as much of this little blending as you want. You don't have to do this much. It, it's, it's all up to you. Everything you want to do with this is it's always up to you. Here, look at that. We'll get some of this green back here, too. Going to happen is when we start to bring in a few more of our lighter tones here on the metal. Starts to look a little bit sharper, a little more crisp. The, that deeper rust or the darker rust, well, looks darker now. That's for sure. And we'll see, we'll throw some over here, over here, over here, and we'll just grab a, another brush to do blending. And again, it's a circular kind of a brush stroke like this. And you just, you're scumbling. Let's see what we can do here on our Space Marine helmet. We'll just throw some, let's see, let that mix with our blue. Instead of mixing some lighter blue, we're just mixing with the blue that's already there. Gives us, see, a little bit of a lighter blue. But look, I'm picking up that darker color. I've got to go back here. I have to grab some more of my lighter color again. And we're just going to throw some of that here. Let's get a little bit of our blue up there, too. And now we'll grab this brush for blending. So you say, what the heck? Is, why is it just those nasty brush strokes right there? Well, they're not nasty brush strokes. Actually, what we've got now is a nicely blended helmet. I know we didn't really get to do any of this in that first episode. It's... That, that first episode, everything just is going to be very rough. Or at, at your, in your opening stages, things are just going to be rougher. I suppose for, for most, that might be one of the most difficult things for folks that are used to painting, say, from a black primer up to something lighter and a whole lot of layers of paint. And then all of a sudden here, you've got no layers of paint. You're just blending like this. It's why I do suggest uh, taking on some simpler figures to, to start with maybe, and not, not go too complex straight away on your very first miniature. And I have plenty of videos on the YouTube channel, just James Wapple YouTube. I've got the Twitch channel. I am just Wapelius there. And there's a, a screen that's at the end of the videos that will introduce you to the Patreon page and the the YouTube channel, all those all those good things. I recommend that you watch me on the Twitch channel because I'm always working with the oils. Always working with the oils, trying to show you as many new things as I can. As as I discover and learn new things, I try to pass that on to you as fast as possible. So, yes, plenty of... See all of this, that now it's starting to catch more light up here because, well, that, that part is just closer to where you're most likely light source is and see we can still go lighter here as well and what we'll do is we'll we'll keep going with this process and then we will hit our some of our lighter rust colors in here as well as sort of the grand finale to this middle portion I'm going to maybe get the skin a little bit lighter in some areas here before we do a little bit of umber glazing in some of the shadow areas. Let 
Where is, there's my, uh, there you are. Now, this is not going to be quite so liquid here. In fact, it's almost going to be dry, but I want you to see the effect that the umber has right there. See how that's blending with it? It makes it not just darker. It's not just darker. It's making a whole new color right there. Whole new color there. Can even do a little bit of that umber glaze maybe on his fingers. I'm going to get the side of his face over here too. Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow. There's some more of the teeths over here. I'm looking at that. I just want to see here what's going on with his hat. I can't really tell what that should be, but we'll just make that sort of a gold color for right now. I want to see what I can do for to separate his lower lid from his eye. And maybe we'll just make his, instead of a monocle, maybe have that be glowing some kind of, there is such a thing as fluorescent oil paint. I won't be using that here because that's sort of an expensive slash rare thing and not easy to get. So I'll just leave that off the menu here. Now I'm also going to take that same kind of orangey red and we'll get a little bit lighter here on this uh, red hand of doom up here. We haven't forgotten his cuffs. Let's do that over here. Now the the paint's going to be glossy until it dries. The nature of oils. But a very simple way, well, and this is what we use on all of our figures, is the Army Painter Anti-Shine. This is how we do every acrylics, oils. It doesn't matter what the medium is. We always just brush this over the top because it's fantastic. It seals the figures really well. And now you don't have to worry about weather conditions, right? You're not spraying it. It's way cheaper, way cheaper. Basically, 100% guaranteed effectiveness. It's to me, you just can't go wrong with it. Now we'll get just a couple of lights in here with our our quadruple zero brush. Now the, in some cases, the paint's pretty darn thin here. This uh, this has a lot of liquid in it. You don't want to put so much that it's going to run like a one of those pin line washes. But here it's just thin enough you can see to flow on top of that without and, and oils, you can actually paint thinner with oils, as in like a thinner line, because, well, oil is thinner than water. So another nice little advantage of the oil paints, you can actually paint thinner lines with the oil. That's why I like using them for, that's why I like to use those for freehand. And I do object source lighting with the oils, I freehand everything. Anything I do with acrylics, I do it with oils. And for the most part, it pretty much does it better. There's a reason why I use the oils all the time. If it didn't do it better and faster, I wouldn't still be in using them or investing this much time in them. Again, we're just setting up 
our final phase. That final phase is just going to be picking out some more details, maybe doing a, a couple of glazes here and there. And yeah, I could use more. I could bring more colors out on the palette, but I thought I would just keep it as simple as possible for you guys here. Not as many colors. I was tempted to just use starter set colors, but that, that Terra Rosa, it's not an expensive paint, and it, it's good for skin tones, it's good for rust, it's good for so many things. Actually, that's not a tooth there. That's that, that's what I mean, making a change. Here we've got some umber. I just wanted to darken down some of the some of the teeth here a little bit on his in his mouth. And then go back and lighten that up. And now that paint is very much thicker. Remember we were talking about thin paint over thicker paint? Well, you can bet that paint and that last brush stroke was really thick because what I just done was basically a glaze. And we'll hit we'll hit this a little bit here. He's got a pouch right here and again all I do is slap some paint on there take our blending brush and we'll just move that around gonna see if I can do a couple of more lighter things back here now this crazy little dial I just realized there should probably be some light here and then maybe some kind of yellow or red for one end of it here and then I'm just gonna clean up this edge here real quick and that's another thing that we will tackle in our final episode is tech doing i wanted to do some sort of freehand with the oils that you could watch i, I wouldn't and then this kind of a video here i would need at least another half an hour 40 minutes to be able to do all the kind of stuff i'd like to do but we're just again we're setting things up look at that we're just gonna plop some of this on here And then we're going to push it around. Sometimes we just call it plop and push. Plop that paint on there, push it around. You can see it makes, and look at how it's it's basically taking advantage of all the colors that's already here in those folds. So we don't even have to paint shadows in the fold. They just happen almost by themselves, almost just naturally by themselves. Same thing with these couple of things. I'm just literally blind blending those. Can't even see what the heck is going on there. I think we'll probably get some of these things on as cuffs as well in that f in the last part of this. I'm just kind of make a little notation there. All right, next up, we're going to do some of our lighter rust. So let's target some lighter rust in some areas, and that's going to involve mostly the Terra Rosa here and a little bit of our Cadmium Yellow Deep. Terra, we'll start with the Terra Rosa first. Now, we're going to do a combination of that, that sort of pin line wash, a little combination of that, and some more 
opaque stuff. And here's an example of the Terra Rosa being used in a more classic sense. And actually, you can see that video on the YouTube channel. Let's find a couple of good spots here. Ah, there we go. And remember, all the paint here, it's all very much wet. So we have to be under control as we do this because it will just wipe the paint away that's already there. Always have to keep that in mind. And like I said, this is slightly lighter than what we did. And then you mix that cadmium yellow in there, and it sort of becomes more of an orange rust. You could use yellow ochre as well. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Let's get a little bit. See, now I don't want to do too much of that up there because, well, it's awful close to where the red is. And I also don't want to lose some of that dark color that's there. We'll swing around here to the back of him. Yeah, th this right here, I have to be pretty mellow with it because we got lots of... The one thing that oils do is they really help you establish some nice, rich darks. If that's if, especially if you do that sort of pre-glaze like we did, it's another reason why we like to do that is to try and get ourselves, <clears throat> sorry, some really nice darks. It is very effective at doing that. Let's just get a bunch of rust on whatever this is here. And we might just put a little, a number or something like that on there, or maybe, I don't know, like a, a treasure thing or some. We'll, we'll see if we have some time again in our last episode to do that. I'm just going to get some more rust here. A little bit more on these little armor bits here. Perhaps on his foot. And if we want to go lighter with that, we'll just take the yellow, mix it in there. And I think you can see this up here, there. And see how it, it, it's towards the, the furthest resource. It's almost like the deepest part is getting the lightest rust treatment. But look, I can even use that to maybe highlight my reds here just a bit. And a little does go a long way. So I would suggest start slow with this, with, with the rust, and take a look at it, do a little bit of an assessment, and say, well, especially with the lighter rust, Uh, I've noted just for myself, there, there's times that, yeah, I could have done a little bit less with the lighter rust. Uh, the darker rust is okay because that's more of a, it almost just shades things, whereas that lighter rust really calls a lot of attention to it. And that's where, again, you can run into just a little bit too much. So I hope this kind of gets you some more of an idea of how we're going to conclude here with just more more of our little details. Look at that. And that's what it's all about. So in part three, we're just going to execute some more details, more refinements, and freehand. And thanks again, everybody, for watching this. And I will catch you again on the next one. Let's get into some of that freehand that we were talking about. And we'll just do a simple checkerboard here. Now with the oils, we talk about thin over thick, right? So the paint that's on here is going to be pretty thick. But if we want to do some checkerboard things, we are going to have to draw some lines here and 
Now, do we do this in, uh, we'll go three here. I think we can divide this up. Okay, so see, we just divided that up into three parallel lines here. And you notice we're just going to let that, as we get down into a recess there, it just sort of disappears. Nice thing about freehand is that you can, with the oils, it's real easy to just kind of go back in and clean some things up and modify things. Well, that's just kind of the oils in general. Okay. Once again, keeping this as thin as we can. Trying to follow the folds here of his coat as much as we can. And we're just about there. Now, who knows, this I might change to be sort of, yeah, I think. I'm tempted to change that to make it more red, like it's just the inside of his coat to match his, his cuffs over there. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. And at this point now, it's just a matter of filling these in and... Not so difficult. We're just going to alternate our shapes right here. And if some of the yellow gets in there and shades some of our black, well, all the better because now we have some actual, maybe, it just wouldn't be flat black. There would be some kind of shading to that. And again, the paint here has to be thin. Otherwise, it just it won't stick at all. Now we can go back in, like I said, with the yellow and bring out some dark, uh, lighter areas too. If we feel the need for that. Where are we at here? We need it dark right here. Dark there, dark here. And then for now, I'll just, we'll hit this too, but yeah, you know what? Never mind. Actually, it's, it's best to just kind of show you how we can change things. So here's some of that, some of our red. Oh, look. Easy change. A little bit more of the fanchion red here. Uh, look at that. A couple seconds that took to make a nice little change right there. No big deal. Now, we'll let that just set for a second or two. And maybe we'll, I don't know, we'll throw some kind of Imperial Guard thing on here or something. first some lighter details there okay and then we'll just i don't know, put some kind of a some number on here a little bit of a stencil type of a pattern there that makes it maybe look imperial guard ish This is that quadruple zero round that you saw in the last episode. Man, just give it some sort of a bit of a symbol there, and then maybe even some illegible type underneath that. Now we got some of our 
Give me a light back out on the pallet here. And that's going to be handy for pulling out some of the lighter squares here. Just like this. Every so often, there's just a little bit of a fuzzy thing that happens uh, on the power. Just some stuff blowing around in the room. And the pallet, by the way, is just a piece of parchment paper with a taking a glue stick and gluing it to a piece of cardboard. It is not a wet pallet or anything like that. I sort of forgot to mention that in earlier sessions. But if you if you ever catch me on Twitch, just again, Wapelius on Twitch or on the YouTube channel, just James Wapple, trying to keep it as simple as possible. You'll see that same parchment paper slash cardboard palette over and over again. It's nice because it absorbs some of the paint, or some of the excess oil, rather. Ah, see that thinner over thick, but I can only do so much with the brushing there. Otherwise, see it starts to pick up too much of the paint that's underneath there. I also have to go back and get some more fresh paint as well. And let's say I wanted to stain this this cloak or his coat a little bit here. I could just take some of the burnt umber and do some glazes on the bottom there with it. I could wait till it's till it's all dry. So I say if the oils are dry, that is no that is not any kind of a tragic loss because there are times where I either get interrupted or if I'm filming say some kind of an army painting series, well I can't film the entire thing in one day. That's just, that's way too many hours. And it inevitably the stuff is dry. It dries in between episodes. So we're, again, we're getting our checkers here. These not going to be quite so light here in the shadow area. We'll let these, eh, I don't want these to be too pronounced over here, so. That is good enough there. Now I'm going to start to fool around with a couple of other extra details in here. Some extra darks in places, like maybe on some of the, the metals here. in his nose, around the eye, maybe even do some, see that little bit of a, a glaze right there? Or as we, I guess we should call it the pin line wash. We also wanted to do something with these, these little studs or spikes here on his sleeves and again I went thinner here because I'm fairly certain this thinner paint's gonna is gonna be what covers and sure enough that is what covers but only for so long before I had to go back and get some more because it was mixing with the red paint as as you would expect it's it's a red paint And like I said, this is a, it's one of those fine cast miniatures, so you you run into all the things that you might expect to run into with a fine cast miniature. Now, I did my best to try and get rid of some of the most glaring oddities or deformities. Now, we have a little bit of white added to our yellow for bringing out some of the lightest squares
And if I didn't like this again, I could just take the take the sponge. Boom. All gone. Totally gone. We won't be doing that. I'm going to see what I can do with some of this lighter red here in a couple of spots on the end of his cuffs here. Maybe even on these. Yeah, just a little bit on the, the cables there. Back to this cuff. I think that that's pretty well. Yeah, we don't need to lighten that anymore. Here, I don't know. Just throw a little bit of my lighter finch and red in there. That's how easy it was to make that switch. And then I'm just going to give some of that a hint of that interior red. Not very much, just a bit. The coat here, maybe we can. Yeah, let's, let's, so I'm going to just uh, make kind of a grayish color here. And I'm going to see if I can't get a couple of folds. And these are some pretty sharp folds right here. But you see, I'm letting the color that's already there definitely mix it. You can see how dark the end of the brush is. So I got to go back here, get more, come back. And I just get a couple of these folds here. advantage of the oils this ability to really make these quick alterations to blend but it's not i hope this is revealed just some other ways of well even if you've used the oils before some other ways of thinking about them or that that pre-glaze or you can set up so many things we're still right now some of the colors that we're using all they're doing is ref uh, basically having a little bit of an effect on the colors that we threw down at the start of this. So I think now you can see with his coat, a little more lights and darks in there, some mid-tones. Let's see what we can do with his hat here. Okay, just in a couple of spots, just in a few. I'm not really sure what's going on here with this part of his coat. That's another thing that I can't really see in this light. I'd have to turn on all of my lights, and that will pretty much blind the camera. So we won't do that. We've got this nice bright gold color here. Let's just look for... Some areas to put this. I'm not quite sure what that is. I think, I don't know if that's a, no, that's not probably not a tooth or a teeth there. We'll get a little bit of my lighter core on the underside of that. Gant little little orc scroll there. And I don't mind all of the red that is on these crazy little spikes here because, well, if it's supposed to be metal and if it's sitting in amongst of a whole bunch of red, how could it not be reflecting some of that red? So I'm all I'm okay with that. I'm going to take a little more of my yellow here. I'm going to see if I can really take, and, and this cadmium yellow and thalo blue are going to make a nice green. 
I just realized that that never got that cable there never really got any kind of color to it so there we go and then we'll just sort of lighten that up boom I'm even going to throw a little bit of my green onto my metal over here to sort of act like a bit of a reflection. See how we're kind of making that into a cylinder now? I can't even go back to maybe some of my lighter rust color on the base. Remember we we kind of hit the base early on, then we just left it go because, well, we don't want a lot of interest on the base. We want it to be on the figure. But I think at this point we kind of know what we have with the miniature. So I'm going to, or with the figure himself, let's do some more stuff on the base here. We pretty much haven't touched this since just about the beginning of the process. Now we can throw some rust into this, and then we can grab a brush here to use. And again, we're just going to do this. We've not put anything in any kind of liquid, and we're just going to take this now. And we'll move this around. Ah, like that. We can... Take our metals here. We can smooth some things out if we feel that is necessary. Yeah, there we are. It really doesn't take much. Using that same pin line wash, glazing sort of technique there. I like to just let that kind of get down into the, the crevices of that particular grating on the base. Again, try to keep the lighter rust colors to more of a minimum back here. Because there's, there's so many fun things going on. I want to cover those up. And now, I'm going to take some, a little bit of my dark blue there. That's the indigo blue. On these little little metal studs here. It's mixing with the red, so it's, just, it's making that, that red darker. It's not actually just turning it blue, it's just making that red a little bit darker. And I'll take a little bit of this Van Dyke Brown here. And, and I'll strengthen. We, we did the lightening of the yellow squares. Left that. You can see how I try to give it, now normally I try to give it more time than this, maybe a half an hour, an hour I go back into this. But we, we don't have too much time here so we're just going to go in sooner and see we can darken up the squares clean up those squares and I wouldn't do much different with this if I was doing this with acrylics it would be fairly much the same it's just well it would obviously be drying in between the layers Once again, going to take a brush here to do some blending. So we threw a couple of darks right in there. And look at this, just pull that out. It does 
everything just it gives us so much gives us a nice little blend right there Again, just wiping out that brush and getting a little bit of my white on here and you, you notice that I try and just leave the brightest highlights for the end that that's a one of your most potent pieces of ammunition there best not to spend that too early well we'll just get some light things along the edges here there we go now I, I i don't know i'll just throw some red here maybe into the eyes that really shouldn't be there because well this helmet in effect shouldn't really be turned on but it seems like it needs to be there there it's good we won't make it bright we'll just say the the lights aren't on there but you can still see a little bit of the reddishness of the lenses i suppose We'll go back in a couple of these areas here and see what we can find. Act, not just darker, or not just lighter, but actually we got to do some things darker in here too. I don't know if you can see his little emblem that he's got here. I'm just going to throw some darks onto that. And then I go back with some of my lights here, and I think that then it's going to show up a little bit better. It's right. It's underneath this chin here. Ah, yeah. Well, and this is another thing too. Sometimes you simplify. Like here, I was making it lighter and lighter. Nothing was happening. Wouldn't matter how I could have made it as as light as I wanted to. It was already as light as it could be. I had to go back in there. Put some darks on there and then then start doing some lights again all right you know what for the heck of it a little, a little bit of green get on to the gold there before we maybe do some more of our orange color here. And I tried to keep the palette as simple as I could here. Not too many colors. Yeah, there we go. So we got some greens, some golds, whatever. And now what I'm going to try to do is do a little bit of a there in effect like a pin line wash there because remember these these well cadmium style colors here they're opaque it's not like yellow so if you want to do an imperial fist you paint them in oils that yellow is going to cover it's not going to be like you won't be struggling to cover with yellow if anything it'll be hard to get the yellow not to be too pronounced that's how much yellow covers as opposed to say the typical middle darker colors in acrylics i've got his little fingernails here to do so this is one time i might just mix that it's a little bit of indigo with our white in it And we'll just give him a couple of fingernails here. Can you actually, where's his other hand? Yeah, you can sort of see those. And I'm going to take the opportunity to get a little bit of that bluish color, blue-gray color into the bayonet sort of thing on his gun there. Now something a little lighter here. I'm 
not quite it out. Again, this is the unfortunate aspect of the fine cast. There's some stuff on the helmet there that's a wee bit rough to try and paint. I'm going to get into a few lights up here. Again, not too many. I'm trying to make that look like a Again, a, a cylinder shape here, so bringing out the this part that's closest to us and making that just, well, a little bit later. Constantly comparing what I've got in other places. Do I need to go lighter, darker? When you work on the whole figure at once, it makes that task so much either easier. We used to do the thing where, okay, we just paint this one part. First, it, it just proved to be a colossal pain trying to just work around those areas that were already painted to get to areas that had none on there. And then realizing that it you would get it is a nicer overall result more color cohesion if you work the whole thing all at once. So it kind of started out as being just an easier way of doing things and then turn into, well, just a better way overall. I'm going to see if I can maybe put a little bit more of this umber into his face. Couple of shots there, and boom, that is it. And there is your Captain Bad Rook in oils. Now, I, I know we could, I could work for a while longer here, add more thing, you know, more rust, more whatever in certain places here. But I think we are all good to go. So, thanks again, everybody. I appreciate you watching this. And we're going to do some final thoughts next. So just some quick final thoughts here. Now I have some, as far as making those oil, well, I just call my own homemade oil brushes. And it's really simple. I take this, I take this, I put them both in here. And as you can see, I just kind of mix that up. Every one of these is going to be different. There is no you know, 50 this, 47% this. You just basically squeeze some of this out. You mix this with it. And as long as it is the consistency of just regular old acrylic miniature paint, that's what I'm looking for. Because the paint that's on my palette, the consistency that's in all of these things, is just like if you were squeezed out a jar of just regular old acrylic miniature paint. And that's why we want a nice high quality thinner here because that's what you're mixing with this and that is what goes into just a jar like so these are dirt cheap on amazon now i got your little cap right here now i do suggest that you have some kind of just pieces of metal some kind of metal sprue or whatever usually something that i cut off like see here he had a metal sprue on him right well that metal sprue gets cut off that Something like that goes into one of the containers here, and that's your agitator. Because the pewter is it's not going to corrode or anything like that. You could use glass beads. I think other people use those too, but, well, to me the pewter is free because I have tons of it. And like I said, I could do much more here. I could just keep going on this for, for quite a while. Or, yeah, okay, like here on his... Cool. Let's say I wanted to do that what I was talking about with the burnt umber there, right? Here, let's grab ourselves some burnt umber here. Now, this has to be pretty dry. That's where we're going to find a dry spot on the palette here. Okay, we're going to turn it like this. And it's almost like there's some mud there. Mud, dirt, whatever. We'll do the same over here too. But that's kind of blending in, mixing with the, the colors that are already there. 
And then we'll put a little bit of that up here too, just to show that maybe there's some mud elsewhere. Maybe even a little bit down here. Yeah, see that softens that up now a little bit. All of these fun little ways to manipulate your oil paints. You really can do so much. Now, as I said, I have all I have three different videos on mixing these paints. I have videos on the Patreon page about doing those color charts, all that really fun stuff. But I just want to say thanks again for watching this. And I will certainly catch you on the next series. And I'm sure it's going to be oils again. Thanks again, everybody.